I've done a lot of strange things in my garden over the years. Banana peels, eggshells, homemade compost teas, you name it. But nothing caught me off guard quite like what happened when I fed my soil a mix of coffee grounds and rice water for just 14 days. At first it sounded ridiculous. Coffee and rice water? It felt more like breakfast than a soil treatment. But the science behind it actually made sense, so I decided to test it. You see, most fertilizers are designed to feed the plant directly. They deliver quick nutrients, but they don't actually nourish the soil. Over time, that leaves your garden dependent on constant feeding, kind of like an IV drip for your plants. But when you focus on feeding the microbes that live in the soil, the invisible life that makes everything grow, you start building something self-sustaining. And that's exactly what this experiment was about. Here's the idea. Coffee grounds are full of nitrogen, calcium, and magnesium. The same nutrients that plants crave, but more importantly, they act like a buffet for beneficial microbes. Rice water, on the other hand, is rich in starch, amino acids, and trace minerals that act as food for soil bacteria and fungi. When you combine the two, you're basically brewing a natural probiotic for your garden. One that wakes up your soil, boosts microbial activity, and helps roots absorb nutrients more efficiently. So I set up a simple 14-day test. I took two identical garden beds. One got nothing but water. That was my control. The other got my homemade mix, used coffee grounds, and the water I normally pour down the drain after rinsing rice. I decided to feed it every three days, gently working the mixture into the top inch of soil and keeping everything evenly moist. Within a few days, I started noticing subtle changes. The soil that received the coffee and rice water began to look darker, softer, almost spongy to the touch. The earthy smell was stronger, richer, like compost that's truly alive. I didn't see much difference in the plants yet, but I knew something was happening below the surface. That's the key with soil health. It always starts where you can't see it. This wasn't about giving my plants an energy drink. It was about creating living soil, the kind that can feed itself. Over the next two weeks, I tracked everything, texture, color, smell, plant response. And by the end of it, the results were so dramatic I could barely believe what I was seeing. But before we get there, let me show you exactly what happens inside the soil when coffee and rice water start working together. By the third day of the experiment, something fascinating started happening beneath the surface. The soil treated with the coffee and rice water mix looked completely different from the control bed. It wasn't just darker, it was alive. When I brushed away the top inch, I could see white, thread-like strands spreading through it. That was mycorrhizal fungi, nature's underground internet. These fungi form symbiotic relationships with plant roots, extending their reach and helping them absorb nutrients like phosphorus, zinc, and copper far more efficiently. Normally this takes weeks or even months to develop, but introducing the mix accelerated that process in just a few days. The reason this happens comes down to microbial metabolism. Coffee grounds are rich in nitrogen, an essential building block for microbial protein synthesis. When you add them to soil, decomposer microbes immediately get to work, breaking down organic compounds and releasing carbon dioxide and ammonium. The rice water adds starch and simple sugars, which act like fuel for bacterial reproduction. Together, they create a biological chain reaction. Bacteria multiply rapidly, fungi flourish, and even earthworms are attracted by the activity. Within days, the treated soil becomes a living ecosystem, converting organic material into plant-available nutrients. By day five, visible changes appeared in the plants themselves. The lettuce in the treated bed had leaves that were noticeably darker and thicker, while spinach developed a deeper green hue, a clear sign of increased chlorophyll production. That chlorophyll boost usually means more nitrogen availability, but what's interesting is how it became available. The microbes feeding on the coffee and rice water release enzymes such as urease and phosphatase, which break down complex organic forms of nitrogen and phosphorus into soluble ions. Unlike synthetic fertilizers that dump nutrients in one quick burst, this biological release happens gradually, feeding the plant steadily over time. Around the same time, I noticed another benefit I hadn't expected, improved soil moisture retention. The combination of decomposed coffee fibers and the fine starch molecules from rice water acted like natural sponges. They absorbed water and slowly released it back to the roots. This made the soil stay moist longer, even under the same weather conditions. It also meant I could water less frequently without the plants showing any stress. That's a huge advantage for anyone gardening in dry or hot climates, where water conservation is key. By day seven, the treated bed had developed a distinct structure. 
The soil crumbled easily in my hands, filled with tiny air pockets and organic particles. Those microchannels are created by microbes and earthworms moving through the soil. They aerate it naturally, improving oxygen flow and root penetration. In contrast, the control bed soil still felt compact and slightly sticky, which can restrict root expansion and cause water to pool instead of draining evenly. At this stage, I decided to take a closer look below the surface. I carefully dug up one lettuce and one spinach plant from each bed. The difference in the roots was striking. The untreated plants had thin, short roots with few root hairs. The treated ones had thick, white roots branching into a dense network of fine hairs, the structures responsible for nutrient and water uptake. This increase in root surface area means more absorption power, faster growth, and higher resilience against drought or nutrient deficiencies. Something else was happening that I didn't anticipate, the smell. Healthy soil has a rich, earthy scent caused by actinobacteria, a group of beneficial microbes that produce compounds like geosmin. By day 10, the treated bed had that distinct forest floor aroma. That's a sign that actinobacteria populations are booming, which is great news for soil health. These microbes play a key role in decomposing tough organic matter like lignin and cellulose, further enriching the soil structure. The microbial bloom also triggered a secondary effect, pH balance. Coffee grounds are often misunderstood as acidic, but once decomposed, they tend to stabilize soil pH around neutral or slightly acidic levels, 6.5, 7 points a row. That's the sweet spot for most vegetables and herbs, as it maximizes nutrient availability. The rice water contributes calcium, potassium, and small amounts of iron, all of which buffer the soil and prevent extreme pH shifts. So instead of making the soil more acidic, the mix actually helps regulate it naturally. Another observation, pest activity noticeably decreased. In the untreated bed, I saw a few aphids and leaf miners early on, but in the coffee and rice treated bed, the pest pressure dropped significantly. That's not magic, it's biology. When soil microbes are active and balanced, plants produce more secondary metabolites like flavonoids and terpenes, which strengthen natural pest resistance. Healthier roots also exude stronger biochemical signals that repel certain pests. Essentially, instead of fighting insects directly, you're making your plants less attractive to them by improving their inner defenses. By day 12, the soil was teeming with visible life. Tiny springtails, nematodes, and earthworms were moving through the top layers, all working in synergy to recycle nutrients. These creatures are nature's engineers. They fragment organic debris, stimulate microbial populations, and mix the soil structure to maintain balance. The entire bed had become a microcosm of living processes. Even the moisture levels stayed remarkably consistent, and surface crusting, that hard layer that forms when soil dries, was completely gone. When day 14 arrived, the difference between the two garden beds was undeniable. The treated plants looked several weeks ahead in growth. Lettuce leaves were broad, full, and crisp. Spinach stood upright with thick stems. Even basil, which can be temperamental in cool weather, showed lush, fragrant new shoots. I measured the growth rate. On average, the treated plants were 30-40% larger in biomass compared to the control. But what's even more important, their root-to-shoot ratio was balanced, meaning they weren't just growing fast, but growing strong. The transformation wasn't just visible, it was measurable. Using a basic soil test kit, I found that the treated bed had a noticeable rise in available nitrogen up by 25%, phosphorus up by 18%, and organic carbon content. These numbers confirmed what the plants were already showing. What used to be compact, lifeless dirt had turned into a thriving ecosystem with active nutrient cycling. What's incredible is that this transformation came from two everyday kitchen scraps, used coffee grounds that most people throw away and rice water that usually goes down the drain had created a living fertilizer that cost literally nothing the secret wasn't in adding more nutrients, but in activating what was already there, feeding the microbial world that makes nutrients accessible and keeps the soil alive. This experiment proved something vital. When you focus on soil biology instead of chemistry, your garden transforms naturally. You don't just grow plants, you grow an ecosystem. And that ecosystem becomes your best fertilizer, your pest control, and your moisture regulator all at once. The coffee and rice water method is proof that healthy soil doesn't come from expensive inputs, but from simple, natural processes anyone can replicate. By the end of the 14-day experiment, I realized I hadn't just improved my plants, 
I'd fundamentally change the soil itself, the texture, the smell, even the way water moved through it. Everything was different. The coffee and rice water mixture didn't just add nutrients, it sparked life. When I pressed a handful of the treated soil, it held together lightly, then crumbled like chocolate cake between my fingers. That's what living soil feels like, structured but soft, full of air and microbial tunnels that breathe. The untreated bed, by comparison, was still dense and pale, with hardly any of that earthy fragrance. The plants told the story even better than any soil test could. Lettuce leaves were thick and crisp, spinach doubled in size, and herbs like basil and cilantro gave off a stronger aroma than usual, a sign of increased essential oil production. Even the roots of these plants looked different when I dug them up. They were coated in a fine white fuzz, a web of beneficial fungi called mycorrhizae. That's the ultimate proof that the soil food web was thriving. These fungi act like living extensions of the roots, channeling water and nutrients directly into the plant. What amazed me most was how sustainable this method turned out to be. No synthetic fertilizers, no bottled solutions, just kitchen waste transformed into a natural biostimulant. You could do this with nothing more than a blender, a watering can, and some patience. The best part? It works for nearly every kind of plant. Vegetables, herbs, flowers, even houseplants. For indoor pots, just dilute the mixture a bit more, about one part rice water and one teaspoon of coffee grounds per liter of water. Feed once every two weeks, and you'll notice greener leaves and stronger stems within days. Outdoors, I now use this method as part of my regular garden routine. Every two weeks, I mix a small batch, one cup of used coffee grounds and one liter of rice rinse water. I stir it well and pour it directly onto the soil around my plants, then gently work it into the top layer with a small rake. If the weather is dry, I follow with a light watering to help everything soak in. In cooler months, when microbial activity slows down, I apply it monthly instead of bi-weekly. It keeps the biology active without overwhelming the system. Another tip, always let the rice water sit for a few hours before using it. That resting time allows beneficial lactobacillus bacteria to start forming, which helps balance the soil's microbiome even more effectively. Think of it as a mild fermentation process. The same microbes that make yogurt or kimchi thrive in this mix. And when added to soil, they crowd out pathogens and improve root health naturally. Since I started doing this regularly, my garden has changed completely. The soil stays moist longer, pests are minimal, and plant diseases have nearly disappeared. Most importantly, I'm no longer dependent on store-bought fertilizers. I've learned that the key to a thriving garden isn't feeding plants more, it's feeding the life beneath them. Once that soil ecosystem wakes up, it starts working for you, cycling nutrients, holding water, and protecting roots around the clock. So if you've got some used coffee grounds sitting in your kitchen and a pot of rice waiting to be rinsed, don't throw that water away. Together, they're one of the simplest and most effective natural boosters you can give your garden. Try it for two weeks. Watch your soil darken, your plants strengthen, and your entire garden come alive again. Because the real secret to growing isn't in what you add, it's in what you awaken.